I'm very pleased to say we're joined here at the Labour conference in Brighton by John McDonnell, UK Shadow Chancellor. Good to see you uh, on the programme then, John. Uh, so you said this morning that you would campaign for Remain in a, another Brexit referendum. Does that strain your relationship with Jeremy Corbyn? He doesn't want to make that commitment right now. No. What Jeremy is putting forward, and I think it's the process by which we can bring the party together, maybe the country as well, is a, a logical sequence, which is about election of a Labour government, then seeing what deal is available from the EU at that point in time and then putting it back to the people, both in terms of a deal, a sensible deal, and remain. And what Jeremy is saying, in terms of the party, we can take that decision once we know what the alternative deal is. My view is I can't see that uh, we could get a better deal than remain, but we'll, we'll see. But that could mean that you're arguing for something different to John McDonnell. Len McCluskey, you'll know, the leader of Unite, has said yeah. anybody on the, on the front yeah. bench for the Labour Party, if they don't agree with Corbyn, they have to yeah, step yeah. down. You, what will you choose, to well, campaign for remain or to step down? <laughs> Len's a friend, and that's, Len, that's a classic statement by Len, so I'll take it with a pinch of salt. Um, the issue is, how do we bring the party together, but more importantly how to bring the country together. And it's allowing people to have that logical sequence of seeing what the alternatives are definitively and then giving people that choice. And I think in that way, in the, the way in which Jeremy Corbyn is managing it, is I think the only way we can heal some of the divisions that there are in our community at the moment. And what Jeremy has said, whatever is the outcome of that final referendum, as Prime Minister he'll implement. Tom Watson has said that he sees a <coughs> Remain campaign as the quicker path to power. Would, would you agree with that? There's issues beyond just party advantage. We're talking about the national interest now and one of the key elements of the national interest is to make sure that whatever path we take is the best path but also a path that brings the country back together again. We can't go on with a divided society in the way that we are at the moment and so that's why Jeremy and it's his style, he's a consensus builder his process that he's put forward I think is the one in which he feels we can build that consensus again. Uh, clearly Parliament have prorogued at the moment Moment, no. So there are limits on what Parliament can achieve. But from the middle of October, or maybe before, when Parliament returns, what will the plan be? Well, we hope, we'll, first of all, we'll see what happens in the Supreme Court decision either today or tomorrow, whether or not we return to Parliament. It could be the Supreme Court decides that it wasn't proper, that we were probed by Boris Johnson. And in that case, we'd want Parliament to reconvene immediately because we'd want to start discussing the issues around, for example, the Yellowhammer report that mm. demonstrated how disastrous Brexit and would be. And call a no-confidence vote? Well, what we'll do is we'll work with the other opposition parties. And ov obviously the no-confidence vote is available to us. But we'll see whether or not... Boris Johnson abides by the law as it now stands, that he goes to the European Union, negotiates a deal, applies for an extension. We'll see whether or not he does that, if, and we'll also see what sort of deal he brings back, if any. So we'll be meeting with the other opposition parties and we'll plan our strategy almost on a daily basis now. We're covering the news around Thomas Cook, of course, yeah. this morning, and yeah. the collapse of that over 150-year-old business. What would you be doing if you were in government right now? Well, it's interesting. Thomas Cook used to be in public ownership and was privatised a number of years ago. And what I said a couple of days ago when this crisis emerged, I wanted the government to intervene, give what limited guarantees were necessary to give us a breathing space to see what options were available. You wouldn't have fully renationalised it, though? No, I'm at the stage now where, you'd, like we did with steel, I argued with the government then they should have intervened early give us a breathing space to enable other options to be explored. They refused initially for ideological grounds. Eventually they intervened and we then looked at other options. That's what we need to do here. On renationalisation, of course, some of your plans involve water companies, yep. energy businesses. Uh, we heard from Rebecca Long-Bailey yesterday that the legislation is ready. Yep. What is going to be the compensation then paid to the current owners of those businesses it'll when be, they are renationalised? It'll, it'll be determined by Parliament and it'll be based upon a range of factors. Any exactly. formula that you can let us in on? That, will, that will, Parliament will hear first. That's our responsibility. The key issue for us is to make sure there's a democratic decision arrived at by Parliament to enable that to happen. Uh, climate change, clearly a big issue. John, mm. we saw last week climate, climate protests, UN General Assembly uh, set to mm. talk about that. Uh, you've called for Britain to pay reparations to the global south, to emerging yeah. markets, um, as have other climate uh, groups, because of our role in the yeah. indus industrial revolution. What kind of impact do you see that having? What exactly are you calling for? Okay, we had uh, we convened an international social 
platform where we invited representatives from around the world, from global mo- movements in the global south in particular. And what that discussion said was, you know, we had to accept that we were the first industrial revolution, the first contributors to climate change, and we had a responsibility, as well as our colonial past as well. So we had a responsibility to work with representatives from the global south to, to help them tackle climate change and, and work together, because it affects us all. We were looking at the transfer of technology in particular. That's what people were interested in. Technology about alternative energy sources, but also technology about how we address the other problems that climate change is impacting upon, in particular around adaptation. So that transfer of technology is one of the key elements around that. Private schools is something that was talked about here at this conference just yesterday. Uh, how do you respond to the allegation that this would be sort of ju- dumbing, uh, d- dumbing down or levelling down the education sector rather than pulling state schools up to meet uh, to, to better try and uh, meet the standards of private schools? It's a misinterpretation of it. What we're doing is we're developing a national education service with a large amount of investment in our, in our schools and in secondary schools as well as primary as well as into higher education overall. We want to ensure that the private schools that exist at the moment are integrated into that service so that everybody gets the best opportunity in life possible. And it'll be, it will be a levelling up rather than levelling down. But we've said all continuously now, we can't go on with a society that is so grotesquely unequal. And it starts within our education system. And it isn't just the debate that's happening in this country, it's happening across Europe in particular at the moment. It's how do we tackle the levels of inequality that we've got that divide our society. In past conferences, I've spoken to the British Chambers of Commerce uh, mm. over the years at your Labour Party conferences, yes. and sometimes uh, they've had to respond to, to, to Labour Party speeches or policy and say that uh, the feeling towards business has not been very friendly and opportunities were missed to, to reach out an olive branch. How welcome is business at uh, the Labour Party conference this year? Is the message changing? It's not just welcome at Labour Party conference. The Chamber, along with the CBI, the Institute of Directors, Make UK, meet us on a quarterly basis now and what we've put to them is you tell us how you want to come into government with us you tell us the structures that you want to engage with us when we go into government and we've had a cooperative and i think a really constructive relationship jeremy corbyn and i and rebecca long bailey who have mentioned our shadow secretary of state for bays meet them now on a regular basis and are looking at how we develop sectoral plans and you'll mm. see in some of the discussions this week for example in, with regard to the automotive industry the development of our sectoral plans based upon that dialogue with the, those companies will, will and those see, sector representatives Will we see a bit more carrot and a bit less stick? Uh, you'll see a combination of investment that we're all on the same page as as well as how we ensure that we work together and setting up the structures to work together. 